problem 3.3-1. The problem reads, the aluminum pipe AB is fixed to a rigid support at A and is capped with a rigid plate at B. The brass rod CD is fixed to a rigid support at D. At 55 degrees Fahrenheit, the gap delta between B and C is 0 0.05 inches. Determine the reaction forces at A and D when the temperature increases to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Here is the aluminum pipe. Here is the brass rod. We're going to assume that when the temperature increases from 55 degrees Fahrenheit to 130 degrees Fahrenheit that the gap closes and the two members come into contact, which causes an internal force and then reactions at A and D. Here we have cross sections of each member and the material properties we need to do this problem. The first thing I'm going to do is find the cross sectional areas of the two members. Now I need to find the change in temperature delta T. Delta T is equal to the final temperature 130 degrees Fahrenheit minus the initial temperature 55 degrees Fahrenheit. That gives us a difference delta T of 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The next step is to come up with a compatibility equation. Let's think about what's going to be going on in this problem. Members A, B, and C, D are both going to increase in length as a result of the change in temperature. So that will be a positive deflection. But then when they come into contact, they will exert a force on each other. That's going to cause them to want to shrink because they'll be both be feeling compression forces. Those forces are going to want to decrease the length of the structure. We need to write in a compatibility equation that includes the gap plus these changes, both positive and negative, uh, in the deflections. I'd like to use the following guideline when writing a compatibility equation for problems like this. I like to write the gap on one side of the equal sign and on the other I like to add the deflections that close the gap and then subtract all the deflections that want to open the gap. In this case the thermal deflections want to close the gap because as a result of the increase in temperature the thermal deflections are making the members A, B, and C, D longer. That will cause this gap to close. But when they contact each other and then press against each other, those forces are going to want to make the gap open back up. So let's apply this rule to our problem. Here I've written the compatibility equation. The gap, which is 0 0.05 inches, is equal to the sum of all these deflections that are going to occur, both thermal deflections and force deflections. The thermal deflections for both members A, B, and C, D will tend to close the gap. So they're given a positive value. The force deflections, which are compressing the members, are tending to open the gap. So they're given negative values. Now I've calculated the thermal deflections for member A, B, and C, D. Thermal deflection is equal to alpha delta T times the original length. Alpha for the aluminum is here. The change in temperature, delta T, is 75 degrees, calculated above. The original length is 35 inches. And I can calculate what the thermal deflections are. For member CD, I can also calculate the thermal deflections using the same equation. And the values of coefficient of thermal expansion for brass and the original length. If I added those two thermal expansions together, that would be greater than the gap dimension of 0 0.05 inches, which means that the gap truly will close when the temperature increases 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I have now substituted in values for thermal deflection into the compatibility equation. I've also replaced delta FAB and delta FCD with the terms PL over AE. Now the terms P, you can see, are the same for delta FAB and delta FCD. That's because the force pushing on AB is equal to the force pushing back on CD. They must be balanced to be in static equilibrium. I've inserted values for the lengths, cross-sectional area, and modulus of elasticity. Now we can solve for our only unknown, which is P. Solving the equation, I get P is equal to 13.99 kips, and P is a reaction at both A and D. 
and we're done.